Now, whole register manipulation isn't super efficient in, in many cases. You often only want to change one or two bits or, or uh, make changes based on uh, a bit or two on a um, single, no. Now, whole register manipulation can work in many cases, but there are also many cases where you just want to make a single change to one particular uh, bit on a register. And so there are certain commands that we want to know about that allow us to do that. And that, that's a very important topic when we discuss microprocessor I.O. manipulation. So once again, I'm going to point you to the AVR microcontroller and embedded systems uh, using assembly and C book, as well as the instruction set manual and the C compiler uh, documentation for XC8 or GCC. All right. So now we're going to talk about uh, bit manipulation on a on an I/O port. All right. So individual bit manipulation. Okay. Let's take a look at two important commands in uh, AVR or at Mega Assembler for clearing and setting individual bits one at a time. First, we're going to take a look at the set bit for an I/O register. So what we do is we take the set bit command. We tell it what address is going to be manipulated and which bit at that address is the one that we want to change. So uh, in this case, setting means set, making it a value of one and clearing means making it a value of zero. So if we wanted to say uh, light up an LED on port B bit five, first we have to set its data direction. So we do SBI, SVR, IO, um, uh, address DDRB bit five. Okay, so SBI, SFR, IO address, DDRB, comma, 5. We're using that special macro to get the address right, and that will make DDRB bit 5 equal to 1. Then we do SBI, SFR, IO address, port B, comma, 5, and that will make, this will actually light up the LED on port B bit 5. Conversely, we can clear things. So if we wanted to... Um, uh, to change the data direction on that and then we wanted to change um, let me see in this case what we'd be doing with these two commands we'd say we want it to be an input so we set the data direction for port B bit 5 to 0 and then what we do is we want to say engage the pull-up resistor uh, then we would set the port B bit 5 on that second line right there to 0 as well oh actually in that case it would be We'd be not doing the pull-up resistor, we'd be doing just regular high impedance mode. Okay, here's an example of actually lighting up an LED and then turning it off again. So uh, what we would do is we do an uh, SBI, SFR, uh, IO address DDRB, comma 5, that makes it an output. Then we would set the bit uh, on port B to be uh, high, that's on bit 5. And you can see on the bottom right there that the LED lights up. And then what we do is we clear it, uh, not DDRB, but port B, we're going to clear. And that brings the output on port B bit 5 low, and it turns off the LED. So let's take a look at an example of writing a program that toggles port B bit 4 continuously. Here we go. So we're going to uh, set the data direction register bit 4 using that first line. So we're setting the bit on there. That makes an output. Then we have a loop. You can see the L1 label right there. SBI, SFR, IO address port B bit 4. That makes it high. And then we make it low. There's no delay or anything in here. So it's going to be very quick on and off, on and off. You won't be able to see this on an LED um, with any reasonable clock rate. Um, but this would make it toggle continuously up and down over and over again. Okay, let's take a look at another example. An LED is connected each pin of port D. Uh, write a program to turn on the LED from port uh, from pin D0 to pin D7. Call a delay module before turning on the next LED. This is a longer program right here. So you can see we set the DDR uh, on port D to all ones using a temporary register R20. Then we set the first bit using SBI. So the first command that we did the out does all the bits at the same time. Then SBI changes only port D bit 0. Then we delay. Then we do SBI port D bit 1. Delay 2, 3, 
four, five, six, seven. The assumption here is that initially all of the port D bits were cleared. They were all set to zero before. That would be an underlying assumption right here. Okay, we can see that's that's how we would do one bit at a time. Now, things can get more interesting in terms of decision making because we can also engage something called the skip if bit in IO register is cleared or skip if bit in IO register is set. That allows us to test the individual value of say a button uh, connected to a single bit on, on, a, on a port. So an example here would be, and this is assuming that you set your data direction register ahead of time, SBIC port D, but we're gonna use the SFR IO address macro and we have a zero right there. And basically what we're saying is we want to skip, sort of skip to the next instruction if port D uh, zero, that's the bit zero right there, is equal to zero. Uh, otherwise, we're going to, uh, if, if we're not skipping, then we're incrementing whatever value is in R20, okay? And uh, and so that's, that's what we would do in this particular case. Next, another example. So skip if bit in IO register is set. So not cleared, in this case, set. We're checking to see if the value on that particular bit for that particular port is the value of one, that is, it is set. So instead of SBIC, it's SBIS. We're looking at port D right there. And we're looking at bit zero on port D. And then it's skip the next instruction, that increment right there, if the port D bit zero value is equal to one. Okay, that means that we would skip the increment and we'd go directly to the load, increment, uh, load immediate of 23 into register R20. Okay. So it's a simple little uh, switch uh, or an, a conditional statement for branching if, uh, if we're testing just a single bit. So this is very useful um, if you've got a number of things connected to your port uh, input pins and you're just testing a single pin, for instance. Here's another example. Write a program to perform the following. Keep monitoring the port B bit to bit until it becomes high and then when port b bit 2 becomes high write the value 45 in hexadecimal to port c and also write a high to low pulse so high then low to pd so port d bit 3. okay here's the uh, example code so we have your clear bit on the data direction register in the case that makes pb2 see because we've got the two right there that makes um port bit port b bit 2 an input then we're going to set the bit on port B uh, to make that, um, let me see, in this case, that's going to be an output, okay, on port B. I forgot to put a little comment right there. But basically, port B, bit 2, is going to be set to be an output. Then we load immediately into R16, a bunch of 1s, and we're going to transfer that value into DDRC. Okay, so all of C is going to be, uh, in this case, outputs. Make port C and output port, the whole thing. Then we're going to set bit, uh, and this is going to be a single bit, uh, DDRD3, okay, to be an output because we're setting it. Okay, so port D, bit 3 is going to be an output. Then we have a loop. You can see right here that again and the R jump again. So we have um, the possibility for a jump, and this is combined with the set bit, um, or sorry, this is going to be uh, basically a, a check, a skip. Uh, if bit set on port B bit 2. So we're checking to see if the bit 2 on port B is high. Okay, and then uh, if it's not high, if it's low, we keep checking. We just basically loop over and over and over again until such time as it's high. As soon as it goes high, then we skip that, uh, that relative jump and we go to the load immediate. Okay, that puts a 45 into temporary working register R16. And then we load everything in port C uh, with the value of register R16. Okay, that's the that out right there is a whole register change. Then we're going to do a set bit on a single bit. In this case, it's going to be port D bit 3. And we're going to basically make that high. We're setting it. So that goes high. And then right afterwards, we're going to clear it. So basically, we're going to do a very quick high, and then we're going right back low. So it's a little, 
very short little pulse. Uh, again, on port D, bit 3. And then we lock ourselves into this uh, infinite loop right here. Here's another example where we have a switch on uh, port uh, B, bit 0, and we have an LED connected to port B, bit 5. Okay, this could be a very common Arduino kind of application right here. So switch is connected to pin B0 and an LED on PB5. Write a program to get the status of the switch right there and send it directly to the LED. So basically the user won't know that you've got software running. They'll actually think it's actually directly connected. It'll be so fast. So what we have here is we have a CBI and an SBI to set the data direction for uh, bit 0 first, then bit 5 next on DDRB on port B. So we have an input on 0, an output on 5. Then we have a loop. You can see the loop right there, actually, uh, right there. So the again, label right there. And we're checking the value to see if it's cleared on uh, bit 0 of port B. Okay, so pin B is being checked, but only bit um, 0 right there. And then we're going to skip next, skip next if port B0 is cleared. And there you've got your jump. And that allows us to go to over right here, if that's the case, if we don't skip. If we do skip, then we're going to the, uh, the clear uh, bit on port B, bit 5. That turns it off. And then we go right back up to the again label right there. Okay, and then do that over and over again. Uh, and then if we are jumping to the over right here, the over label, then we're going to be doing a set bit on port B, bit 5. That will make it a 1. That turns on the LED. And then we go back to the again right here and we start the process over again. Mm -hmm.